Hello and welcome to Fierce Friday. My name is Stephanie Dawn and I am so grateful to be here with you. I am the chair of the Million Mom Movement Council and I'm joined here by my fellow council members, Carmela Velarde, Taz Ferreira, Jody Parker and Naeva Flore. And we're excited to be here with you today for this business focused presentation. And we have some special guests here today, uh, Rita Fleming and Brandon and Olivia Ashodin, Crowns with Purium, are going to be sharing their thoughts today about how it is that we talk to the 85%. And I'll be talking in a moment to you about how I came up with that number. <laughs> but we're really happy that you're here with us today. Um, Council, would one of you please read the pledge? Um, uh, I've got, uh, we've got Carmela coming on in a moment to uh, share in the news, but uh, Taz or Jody, would one of you please read the pledge? I set it up. Thanks, That's Jody. About. It's already up. Uh, so I will just share my screen. Here we go. This is the millionmommovement.info website. I always leave this up so people know that we are the only ones who get your information. So here under movement and join, that is where you will find the pledge. You can also find it uh, in your Purim app. You're gonna come all the way down here because we are going to set our intention for the day and uh, read along with me. I pledge to defend the health of myself and my family. I pledge to choose organic foods that are minimally processed and free of man-made ingredients. I pledge to read labels and educate myself on all aspects of clean living. I understand that my actions today will positively impact the health and environment of future generations. I am committed to sharing this movement of many. I am the Million Mom Movement. I want to point out just a few quick things. In that first line, I pledge to defend the health of myself and my family. We purposely put myself first because you want to put your oxygen mask on first. And then movement of many, mom, it is capitalized there because when we first started, the dads and the teachers and all the people who cared about clean living were upset. Why is it just the moms? It's not just the moms. It is the movement of many. So I just wanted to point those things out. I'm going to stop my share. And Steph, back to you. Thanks so much, Jody. So several weeks ago, we were, many of us um, were in Long Beach uh, at the Diamond Club and I've got my wonderful little book right here. And there was incredible presentations by all the crowns. Um, uh, Rita and, and Brandon and Olivia gave us some amazing transmissions and I've invited them here to be with us today as well as the council because I wanted to offer the field a think tank about how we talk to those who need us the most. Okay, and I'm just gonna um, give you some sort of uh, foundational statistics for uh, you to understand where we're coming from here. Many of you probably already know this, um, but for those who don't, uh, I wanna just share with you some of what's been landing for me uh, as I've been preparing for, uh, for this experience today. So recently I watched a, a film called The Toxic Truth About Food, which you can find on YouTube. Um, it was produced by the Sentner Academy in Florida. And they shared some, some statistics that really stopped me in my tracks. And so I wanted to share them with you and then we can dive into how it is that we're gonna be approaching um, those that we're really truly here to serve as servant leaders here as Purium brand partners. So the obesity rate for adults has skyrocketed 31% since 1997 in the United States. One in five school-aged children is obese. One in five children has high cholesterol, also known as inflammation. 54% of our children have chronic health issues, 54%, versus 12% in the 1980s. One in six have a neurological, developmental, or behavioral disorder. One in 44 have autism versus one in 5,000 in the 1980s. 
almost 20% of our children in the United States are medicated for ADHD, anxiety, and ADD. And for those of you that want to learn more about that, uh, Taz Ferreira and Carmela Velarde, our council members, did an amazing Lunch and Learn, which you'll find on our YouTube channel, the Million Mom Movement YouTube channel. I believe they did that last month in May. Childhood cancer is up 27% since 1975. The U.S. infant mortality ranked 56th despite spending more on health care than any other nation here in the United States. So I read all of these to you to sort of, you know, create the landscape from which we're going to jump off from today and share more about how it is that we and uh, the beautiful crowns that we've invited here today are guiding, coaching, and mentoring our teams to talk to the 85%. Now, where did I get this 85% from? So in a, a slide that was shared uh, by Perium uh, Corporate back in Long Beach, they shared that the 15% is our warm market. You know, the people that that we know that that our colleagues are, uh, you know, maybe we're at dance class with them. Maybe we do yoga classes. Maybe we, you know, meet them in our neighborhood, right? Wherever we're out in the community. 42% are the untapped market and the future potential. And 43% are willing to invest in and try supplements. So it's those last two numbers where we get 85, okay? Or in other words, the majority. <laughs> the majority of, you know, whoever's in the United States is who we need to be reaching out to with the solution that we have with Perium, okay? So, um, and then I have this quote here, and I know you'll appreciate it. The food you eat can either be the safest and most powerful form of medicine or the slowest form of poison. And that's from Ann Wigmore. So I think we've seen from these statistics that I've been sharing that we are, we're, we're poisoning our children. I, who have been dealing with a cancer diagnosis, have been acutely aware of how the food that it is that I've been eating has been you know, in the past was poison for my body. And so we as parents, we as mothers, as fathers, as, as concerned citizens are striving here at the Million Mom Movement to do better. When we know better, we do better. So, Carm, I'm just realizing that, um, I forgot to go to you for in the news. So I'm gonna call on my, um, my uh, beautiful colleague, Carmela Velarde, and she has some news that I also think will underscore some of what I've been sharing here. Take it away, Carm. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Wow. What, what an honor it is to serve on the council for moms and caregivers because of these statistics rising. It's it's with activism that we have to understand these statistics that we get to go out and educate because the 85% is who we do need to talk to. I love this topic so much because we all need help with how to talk to this 80%, right? Because they, they are the majority. So in the chat, I'm gonna be posting um, a couple of articles that I would love for you guys to take a look at. And um, I'm gonna share a screen. Um, and basically, this is what's in the news at the moment. There is an annual Technomic Top 500 chain restaurant report that ranks the biggest chain restaurants in the nation looking at last year's top earners. So not, not coincidentally, I'm sure all of you know, the very top one is McDonald's. And let's look at how much it is that they are bringing in just as of last year alone, $46 billion, guys. So let's think about why are we even talking about this right now? It's because it's about convenience. People, the 80 percenters want convenience. They need food. 
right? And this is why our solution, we have to be able to speak into what we have, this versus that, right? All the time. So in looking at this article, just save it to your computer and take a look at it later. But, you know, I listed it next to Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, Taco Bell, Wendy's, Dunkin' Donuts, Burger King, Subway, Domino's, Chipotle. These are American infrastructures that, that are now moving into, they're moving into international countries. I'm going to the Philippines shortly, and you know that there's a McDonald's, a a Dunkin' Donuts, a Wendy's, they're everywhere now. Why are we allowing that to be what America is representing as far as our food and nourishment? Why? And the second article, um, you know, that, that I posted up also has to do with that they are raising their prices. So it's not that, yeah, it's just convenient and they're inexpensive. No, now they're becoming more expensive. So they're getting out of that bracket of like the reasons why people are leaning into these very high, you know, vis visible brands that are American culture. It's the top five are Starbucks, McDonald's, Chipotle, Outback Steakhouse, hmm, and Wendy's. So if you look at what their rates of increase are, it's 20%. This is not small increases. These are large increases. So as inflation happens with all the food chain supply, it's how actually happening as well in the fast food chain supply, of course. So roughly 8% compared to a year ago, that's, that's McDonald's, the number one, 4% across. So 20% for Starbucks is surprising because that's a large margin. And we all know now, if you don't know, we do have the new coffee shop protein that we can offer as a, as a solution. And it is no question that it is because we want to speak into these margins. So with that, I'm complete. I pass the word on. Thank you so much for underscoring everything. So we have, a, we have some big work to do here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And um, it's something that I'm, you know, that really feeds me and fuels me as a brand partner with Perium. I'm thinking about those people all the time, how to talk to them and how to help my team talk to them. So I wanna invite our, our beloved mom and dad uh, crown team here, Olivia and Brandon, thank you so much for joining us. You know, you didn't get to crown um, by, uh, by being quiet, <laughs> you get to crown by opening your mouth and, um, sharing your truth and your heart. So I'd love to hear how it is that you two are tackling this topic and how you're leading your team. And, and for those of you who are, are, are joining us, I highly recommend that you take out your pen and paper because I know whenever crowns talk, gold is dropped. So thank you so much for being here with us, Olivia and Brandon. Hi, thank you for inviting us. This is an honor. Um, here's the thing. Uh, I like to think we're, we were, we are part of the 85% for sure. Um, a lot of the verbiage and, and even like learning about organic was brand new to us when we first started here. Um, we ate clean. That's like the, in the Midwest, clean eating's popular, you know, but the whole organic and then all like life is say everything like that is, it's all brand new. It was brand new for us. So, um, something that how to talk or the verbiage, keep it simple because it, it, it's super important because it can, especially think of it as a mom. I remember, um, to what, to, well, how long, we've been almost three years now in Perium. I just remember like right before we met Perium, I started watching, you know, Netflix about all the stuff that's happening with the earth and like, how can we do better as a family for the ecosystem? And, and as a parent and a mom and you're doing a million things, you get overwhelmed, like, oh, I'm doing this wrong. And then you're trying to figure out a simple solution. And that's the key word is simple. And when, what we saw here, uh, with Purim was that this was a very simple way to make a big, like make an impact, eco-friendly and also with the organic and diet, you know, those things, but where you don't have to be so like, you, you almost could still keep doing your everyday life. And that's the thing is that I think even as we've grown in Purim, 
it can get, once you start learning more, you're like, okay, boom, 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 boom. But if we keep it simple, like I love the new campaign, the fruits and veggies. Everyone knows what a fruit is. Everyone knows what a veggie is. And here's a very simple way to add that in that not only do your parents will love it, but the children love it too. And you don't have to worry about all these extra add-ons of your day because that's the thing is what we're highlighting here is convenience is the biggest thing. And so when we're talking to people, it is, it's just making it very simple and showing a very easy system that everyone can relate to and, and see that they can have success in. Yeah, I agree completely. Um, using simple words, like, uh, especially if you're coming from a place where we, a lot of this information was so new for us and we like to learn about it. So we, it's easy to become educated and excited and start to vomit on people like, glyphosate, Dave Sandoval, organic, as you just go on and on and on. But honestly, what's really worked for us and what's really worked for our organization is like, hey, I used to be tired and now I'm not tired. Yep. As simple as that. Like, hey, brain fog, no brain fog. Mm -hmm. Breakouts, clear skin. Like just contrast, contrast, contrast. Because honestly, the tr once the trust is established with you, they're buying into you more than anything. And then when they have their own experience with the products, now they're curious and they want to know, why does this work? Why do I feel so? Then we can kind of go into more. Well, I, yeah, honestly, I didn't know about it either, but there's glyphosate and things like that. When we're, now, when, we're, when we're talking to people who, you know, can geek out and really go into things, then obviously we want to flex that muscle of all the amazing things that Dave, Sam, Dave and Amy have been able to do. This console has been able to create the biodegradable things like that. But from the very beginning, like, man, I know you're exhausted. I li literally just got a new brand partner right before this call. We're doing a getting start training right after this call. Her boyfriend walked in. He's like, I said, how you doing, man? He said, tired. I was like, got a power shake coming your way. What's the power shake? Don't worry about it. You won't be tired. He's like, I love it. I need it. And then, and, and then that's it. And it, boom, they're on board. So I didn't try to go into like, it's the equivalent of six organic salads. Because if you haven't eaten one salad this week, there's no concept of eating six salads in a day it doesn't even res it just sounds good but just because something sounds good doesn't mean that it's going to emotionally connect to move you into actual action so that's what we're trying to do is like when we can say it's so simple that it's a picture drawn in their mind's eye the clarity will help them take that direct action mm -hmm. yeah what i'm present to as i listen to you both speak is your posture and your authority so speaking with authority, um, it really, we make recommendations every day in this business, don't we, you guys, <laughs> about what people need. And um, recently I spoke with a woman in um, Ohio who was drinking Mountain Dew every single day, every single day. And she goes, oh, you're going to cringe. And we were on Zoom and I actually, I did cringe. I did. And I, 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 I knew that I had to be very, very basic in terms of how I spoke to her about what she was doing to her body and the damage in all honesty, from what I know about what sugar and high fructose corn syrup can do to the body. So I really had to dial it back a little bit in terms of what she needed to do for herself. I wasn't gonna go right into the ULT. I just couldn't. In talking with her about the ULT, I did talk about the fruit and veggie pack, you know, because for her, it was really more about um, really, um, I mean, she needs a whole pantry rehaul, you know? <laughs> And we just got to, we, I needed to start in a very simple way with her. So are you finding that you guys, like wh where exactly do you live, Brandon and Olivia? In which state? We live in Mountain Dew, drinking Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you, That's right. You're very near this brand partner that I um, brought me to this call. So yeah, Mountain Dew, drinking Ohio, where um, these are habits. These are health habits or, or, or you know, the opposite of health. <laughs> <laughs> These are habits that people have that, um, and they know they should do better. They, this woman knew she should do better. And, and where I had to go with her was, do you believe that your nutrition can change your health? And she said, yes. So we had agreement, right? So talk to me, Brian and Olivia, a little bit about how you are educating the, the Mountain Dew drinkers in your, in your community. <laughs> Well, really, we're just showing how we're educating is we have um, 
weekly events where people come and try it out. But also too, again, it's just going back to just what is something that's like your vice and showing like what's, it, what's something that I've done. Like, um, again, I start from my beginning of the journey because I was someone who's drinking a synthetic energy drink. Mm-hmm. Um, hardcore, I, I caught it. It, I, a lot of it. I caught it my mama juice to the point where kids would whip it up for me and get me going, you know? And that's regular, in Ohio, I mean, in Ohio, anywhere, but it's a regular, if you're talking about the do, <laughs> and you know, 85%, it's regular. Um, and so it's just, again, sharing the story because again, if someone would have just shot me the facts about can't beat this, I totally would have like felt almost like eh, and not been into it. But the fact that when I was hearing other people's just stories of, oh, I felt so good. And then the long term, because that's the thing, you're talking to your friend in Ohio and she's saying she knows she needs to do something. We all internally know, intuition, I guess, is telling us, what's the long term or how long can I go do this type of lifestyle? What's like the long term? And that was me. And so I always just shared as stories, you know, I understand having low energy, I understand having a lot of kids, a lot of responsibilities, a lot of different hats you have to wear. And that's what I did is I shared like a video of me like, and I, and I was drinking something like this. And what I realized is that I had to keep drinking more throughout the day and more and more to the point where I was like, whoa, my capacity is so high. <laughs> like I stretched it when it comes to consuming energy and I, it scared me. And I found a better, I found an alternative where it's all 100% all whole foods. And I don't have to worry about the fact that I'm gonna have to keep, again, sharing that story. And then immediately everyone that in my network was like, what is that? Like, cause I'm, I'm like you girl, I'm drinking like four a day now and I'm drinking, I'm on my fifth cup today. You get what I mean? So having these type of stories, it makes it e- again, the stories of, and then having like, a, we had a girl who she always on her way to the bank would run to a 7-Eleven, you know, and that's where she would go get her big gulp or whatever it is and whatever else she would have for her food through that. And just that simple switch of things. And she lost like a ton of weight having stories like these, like these simple, subtle stories is now expanding. Okay. I, I'm willing to try that in, in giving that belief. Yeah. I love that. So you guys are having uh, weekly in-person events. Did you say Olivia? Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Did you catch that everyone? <laughs> yeah, that was tomorrow, yeah. Super food Saturday. Super food Saturday. Did you hear that? I love that. So brilliant. Wow. Okay. So thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing your brilliance. We're going to pop around a little bit, but please stay here because we might come back to you, uh, you guys. So I want to go now to my um, colleague, Taz Ferreira in um, Florida. We were just chatting this morning. And um, Taz, congratulations on um, Allison and Jared ranking crown, by the way. (laughs) So, so amazing. We're going to be having an interview with them in July. But I really want to congratulate you on giving birth to crowns, girl. (laughs) And so, um, Taz, you know, we 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 talk a lot about um, about uh, how to how to coach and how to mentor our downline and how it is that we support them in talking to people all the time. So please, will you share some of your gold nuggets about how you help, how you are helping and how you helped Allison and Jared to do what they've been able to do uh, in terms of this specific topic? Absolutely. So before I go on, I want to say congratulations to the Shodans. I saw you're expecting a sixth baby. So I wanted to say that because that's, you know, fourth baby, you're six people in the family. Yeah. So that's, that's a huge congratulations. She's actually going to birth another one. So this is huge news for the, the whole Purium community. So, you know, I think like what you said, Steph, how you were talking to this woman and you were talking about Mountain Dew and she felt bad and she's like, you know, I know I shouldn't be eating this. I shouldn't be drinking this. Well, you know what? How do you know? How do you know? I come from that family who we had no idea. You don't know what you don't know. And you know, everyone on this call today, you know, we're living a healthy lifestyle. We're drinking our green drinks two, three times, four times a day. But you know, we weren't always this way, right? There was a time where we were all very unhealthy. I was very unhealthy. So always go back to that moment. 
before you found what nutrition meant, what before organic, what did it mean? What did having green juice, what did having fruit mean? So I want to tell you a little bit about my story. So you guys all know me that, you know, I eat super healthy, no sugar, all these green juices, but I wasn't always like that. I come from a family that we ate so unhealthy. We did not know there was a correlation with our food and the way we felt. Not one time did any of our doctors ever tell us, you know, maybe you should evaluate how many steaks you're having. Maybe you should look at the amount of rice you're having. No, we never looked at that. So my background is in South America, my mom's family, they're butchers, okay? So meat was the staple. Fruit and veggies, we didn't eat that. We come from a tropical environment, but no one ate fruits and veggies. And the veggies that we would eat would literally disintegrate in our mouth. There was no crunch. There was nothing. I had no idea what people were talking about. Salad was iceberg lettuce, right? So just start thinking about that. A lot of people don't even know what is healthy living. And you know what I used to think? Whenever in my family, when we thought of someone who's eating, let's say healthy, right? We would always think that they're missing out. Oh, they have to eat this way because what happens? They have diabetes. They have diabetes, so they're missing out on that. So they're going to be having disgusting food. It's going to be gross. So you automatically, you're trained to think that this health food is, un is gross, flavorless. It doesn't taste good. You're going to be missing out on what you love. And you know, this is a strong emotion that gets set into motion when we are very young, okay? So we have this strong connection to food. And we don't want to be told, you can't have dairy anymore. You mean that causes inflammation, but, but dairy, dairy is my life. Like guys, I used to eat a cheese platter all to myself. They, were, they would tell me it's for sharing. And I'm like, no, this is for me right? I had no idea. I heard it was bad for you. It didn't help your microbiome, but I'm like, mm, I love it. I love it. And I had such a strong emotional attachment to it. So I think we need to start explaining to people that this emotional attachment can change. It can pivot. We can start changing the way we taste and telling them that it's not all or nothing. Because I would get people who would tell me, they're like, Taz, I can never do what you do. I can never. They look at the way I eat and live as something unattainable. But I always bring it back. I wasn't always this way. It took me years to get to this way. You know, the little bit that you can do every day, that says so much. Just do a little bit than yesterday. You want to go to the restaurant. You want to order whatever you want. Fine. Do it. Give them the permission to live. Okay. Because once you start taking that away, they start pulling back. They get scared. So you let them know it's okay. Just have that bio fruit. Just have that green spectrum. Have your bio medic before going to the restaurant. And you know what starts happening? Their body starts giving them cues. You know what? I, I feel good. I have this one, one woman who, you know, wine is part of our summer treat. Everyone drinks. They're going to a event. Of course, they're drinking. So she tells me, you know what? I'll do this transformation, but I'm not giving up my alcohol. I'm not giving up my wine. And I'm like, look, this is your transformation. You do what you want, okay? Do what you want. Just have your biomedic, have your green juice before, do what you want. And then naturally she calls me up and she's like, well, you know what? I brought my apothecary with me and I asked for a wine glass and I put it in the wine glass. I didn't even need the alcohol. Naturally, I didn't say anything to her about that. So, you know, you need to allow them to do that. Give them the permission. A lot of times people feel if you don't say these words, you're allowed. That's okay. Let's start retraining ourselves no cheat meal, right? Cheat meal for me says you're cheating yourself. It's okay. We have to start developing a healthy relationship with food. 
food is there to fuel our body. If we are eating empty calories, what is it doing to our bodies? If we're eating franken food, what is it turning us into? If we are eating nourishing, high density foods, who can we become? Show them the possibility of who we can be because we've seen it. There's so many people, like the stats that you mentioned at the beginning, oh, the autism, the neurological issues, this is happening every day. I mean, we take a trip to Disney with my family. You see it everywhere. You see with all the kids and kids are looking at the parents and what and how they are living. It's not what you're saying. It's what you're doing. So just do and give them permission that it's okay to be who they are. Make little changes. Back to you, Steph. Yay. Thanks, Taz. So brilliant. You're getting a lot of love in the chat. Oh, we're going from sad to rad here, right, folks? And it takes time. It was not overnight for me. It was not overnight for Taz. Not for any of us, right? So giving people permission to... Um, to take their own steps of their own accord and in their own way and on their own time. So it's always about, for me, with my customers, it's always about the invitation to, to create transformation. It's never about you have to. <laughs> it's like we're adults here and I want them to, I want to work with them where they're at with that, that gentle nudging, that gentle midwifery as I was sharing with Taz this morning where I'm holding space for their transformation, really. So um, without further ado, let's bring on our beautiful uh, Rita Fleming, who uh, is my accountability partner. I just got to give her a shout out. I so appreciate you, Rita, and the way that you lead and all that I've been able to learn from you uh, in the Bliss Ohana under Sarah Rhinelander's leadership. And I'm so grateful that you're here with us today. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm loving this call and loving everything that all the value that everybody's adding and sharing your stories and just highlighting that simplicity and connecting to other people. Like what value does this add to somebody else's life? And the only way we know that is by asking questions and seeing what problems they're dealing with. Like the Oshodans were saying, is it I'm not sleeping enough. I'm dealing with anxiety. I, I don't have enough time in the day. So I just wanted to bring up a few statistics so we can have like a baseline understanding um, of the 85%. So 90% of Americans are not getting the recommended amount of fresh fruits and veggies. And 96% of Americans are not getting organic fresh fruits and veggies. And those statistics blew my mind. I was like, whoa, that's a really, really big number. So how did we get to that place and that point? Um, and one is we have a really broken food distribution system where so many communities don't have access to produce. Uh, many people are living in food deserts where they a, just are not in close proximity to produce or grocery stores, or B, they don't have transportation to get um, access to, fr to fresh produce. So accessibility is something that's really important. And that's a solution that we solve here with shipping our superfoods, you know, they can get into um, food deserts. So that's, that's important. Um, and I, there's this just a crazy statistic just to kind of understand it but 39.4 million Americans don't have access to, they can, they can get grape soda, but they can't get grapes or fresh grapes. <laughs> so it's just kind of showing what is accessible out there and what isn't. The next thing that really stops people is cost. Cost can be a huge prohibitor to people getting nutrient dense foods or access to organic. Um, and on average, eating healthy is 60% more expensive. Um, so again, we have an amazing solution here, especially starting with our fresh, you know, fruits and veggies pack. That's $3 a day. <laughs> so not only is it going to substitute your grocery bill, but it's actually going to save you on your grocery bill. So we have that accessibility covered, and then we're really providing that cost efficiency. The next um, barrier that gets into people's way is lack of time. 
So many of us are very busy. People are working full-time jobs. Many people are working multiple jobs. And um, so time, you know, either not having time to create healthy meals or time to go to the grocery store. So this is another solution that we have is, you know, these superfoods, they, they're so efficient. They save me so much time. And if you're, you know, really supporting or leading with that fresh, you know, fruits and veggies pack, that's three minutes a day. And, and same with our other packs, you know, it's, they're so convenient. So that's an important thing to look at. The next thing is our taste buds have been duped <laughs> into craving salts, fats, processed sugars, flavors, all of these additives and things are highly, highly addicting. Um, and our nutrient dense foods, as so many of you were sharing, once you just start to add this in, a lot of those cravings and addi addictions naturally start to fall away. As you're getting that nutrient density, you know, those sugar cravings, those salt cravings, they just naturally start to fall away. So that's a beautiful, we have a beautiful solution there. Um, another is, you know, education. There's such heavy advertising on processed foods. Um, kids see it all day on commercials. And so it's a lot of people don't don't even know what, like for instance, a yellow squash is because they've never seen it or they've never had it. So I think we take a lot of things for granted um, and starting just with simplicity. You know, what? why are fresh fruits and veggies important in the first place? And what are some fun ways that we can add them into our diet, either recipes or what, what fruits and veggies are in season right now? That's just like a simple educational reel or something that you could do to create that engagement and open up those conversations. Um, but, you know, education and access is a, is a huge aspect of this. And if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you can't until your basic physiological needs of food, air, water, and shelter are met, you can't reach that self-actualization, which is like becoming the most that you can be. You know, you can't even begin to think of those things until you have a reliable food source. And what we have with Perium is not only a reliable food source, but it's like the top 1% most nutrient dense foods available because of the way that it's grown and processed and harvested. And not only are people really deficient in fresh fruits and veggies, but we're very deficient in our vitamins and our minerals um, and micronutrients. And Perium is an amazing for solution for that as well. Um, and just some other statistics so that we can kind of understand as a collective. Um, 93% of Americans don't get enough vitamin E, 97% don't get enough fiber, 98% are deficient in potassium. So just adding in more fresh fruits and veggies, these superfoods, which our packs make so easy and accessible, um, you're starting to get in antioxidants. You're starting to get colorful foods in, living foods in, which is gonna make you feel more vibrant and that's also going to have all of your your micronutrients in there. Um, so those are just a, a kind of the baseline that I wanted to cover. And then why is it important to add in more fresh fruits and veggies? You know, just for like an understanding, I wouldn't go into this depth, but just a little understanding for all of us. Um, adding in more fresh fruits and veggies, they found that there's a 76% decrease in risk for Alzheimer's. Um, and the top 10 um, causes of disease or causes of death are heart disease, cancer, COPD, stroke, Alzheimer's, diabetes, and all of those are from lifestyle. So you can actually prevent so many of these chronic diseases through lifestyle habits. So just educating around lifestyle habits. And there's actually studies that show you can reduce um, that risk by 90%. You can reduce diabetes by 90% by adding in five lifestyle habits. One, adding in more fresh fruits and veggies. Two, not smoking or reducing smoking. Three, getting to a balanced weight four doing like a half an hour of exercise a day and five getting deep sleep so 
how can we simplify and just focus on lifestyle habits and how those benefit us um, is really important. And also, you know, bringing it back to what the Ashodans were talking about as far as simplicity, I love just sharing your own story, you know, so why, why are you doing this? How has this impacted your body? How has this impacted your sleep? How are you feeling? How has this impacted your emotions and your joy? And what was your original intention for doing this? Was it to feel younger and look younger? Was it to have more energy? Was it to have more focus and concentration? So really leading with your story and sharing why you're doing this and then listening to others. What are their biggest struggles? You know, is it accessibility? Is it education? Is it understanding like why these fresh fruits and veggies would be a benefit? Is it, you know, just kind of coming back to what is the main barrier to access? Oh, Rita, <laughs> we're all being so fed. Thank you so much. You're getting a lot of love in the chat, my dear. So good, right? Gold. This is gold is what folks are saying. So what I'm hearing just to sort of encapsulate, Rita, is the, the, the opportunity here as Purium Brand Partners is to educate. And the way that we educate, yes, we can share facts and yes, we can share statistics. Those are very important. But when we share our stories, I've been doing this for six years. And this is so key for me to keep sharing my story. <laughs> I have many stories with Purium, many stories, many of you have heard them. And don't ever underestimate the power of your story and sharing from your heart. And even, even if you don't think you have a story, get with your upline because you probably do. And, you know, um, Rachel Balansat, my two-star upline crown, has this amazing um, presentation that she did for us a while back uh, with the Million Mile Movement and the Wi-Fi was really bad. So we need to do it again. But understanding that your story has medicine, it has medicine for people because then they see themselves in you and they see possibility for them to come out of whatever diagnosis or ill health experience that they're having. So thank you so much, Rita. This has been gold. Oh my gosh. And we've got more, but, but wait, there's more. So I want to bring on um, my dear colleague, Jody Parker who I call her Dr. Jody. She's a beloved member of our council. And I want to hear, Jode, you know, you are talking to people all the time um, on the social networks and in your team. You have a lot of crunchy moms. <laughs> you know, let's hear from you, Jode, about how it is that you are talking to the 85%. You know, it's interesting the way you put that. And thank you, by the way. Um, so I'm the girl that everybody comes to when they already know the basics. So this topic for me has not been an easy one. I have been living this lifestyle for 20 years. And I grew up with uh, my stepfather, grew up on a farm. So he went to the farmer's markets and I ate vegetables and fruit every day. And I had fiber and I had oatmeal for breakfast every day. And um, so, and I also live in Colorado and Colorado is the healthiest state in the nation. And I went to school in Boulder, uh, which I, I literally within a five mile radius of me have three health food stores. Um, and so I didn't get it. For most of my life, it was just the way I lived. And then two things happened. I went on the road with Up With People as an event coordinator, and I was on the road for a year and a half. And I was in 16 states and four provinces in Canada and Sweden and Germany. And I was traveling with people from 50 different countries. And um, it was a huge wake up call in two ways. First of all, all the Europeans came to America and gained weight. And it was because of what they were being fed. And that was the first time that I really started to put together, you know, beyond counting calories and things like that, that what, what we were eating here was a problem. And I go from Boulder, Colorado, which is about as crunchy as you can possibly be, to Winter, South Dakota, which is a town of 3,500 right in the middle of South Dakota, right on the Nebraska border. And they ate beef for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And at the grocery store, you basically couldn't get fresh fruits and veggies. And the, the salad bar was this like little measly iceberg and, you know, with the, the synthetic dressings. And I got there and went through total culture shock. 
And that's when I realized I saw the food desert. I saw it. And so those experiences really changed me. But the one that really changed me was when my son got very ill. Most of you know the story. If you've been watching Fierce Friday at all, my oldest, who's nearly 18 now, um, went into early liver failure at five months old. And so I had to learn to live toxin free. So this is my lifestyle. And so I have very hard time relating to the 85% because if I lived that way, my baby would be dead, literally. Um, and, and so, and I've been living it for so long that I'm so far removed. And so when this started coming up in my business, because my entire team are crunchy mamas like me, cause they all came to me for help. And that's how I grew my team. Um, and we all started realizing like we're in this little tiny niche. It's when I found the power of the story. And, and so you introduced it so well, Stephanie, and what you just said, um, a great example. So a couple examples, I had irritable bowel syndrome. It's just, I had it my whole life. I had no idea I had a dairy allergy until my son got sick. No more dairy, no more irritable bowel syndrome. And that suddenly made me relatable. When I tell that story, people go, oh, really? Is that all it was? Yeah, that's all it was. No more dairy, no more irritable bowel. And there's no more sitting in traffic going, oh God, please move, please move. I have to get to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, and so when I started to be relatable in that way, people were like, oh, Oh, so I wasn't so distant. I wasn't Dr. Jody anymore, as Stephanie calls me. I was a real person. When I had Lyme, uh, when I was diagnosed with Lyme, it, it took a long time to get the diagnosis because I wasn't very sick. I had subchronic constant problems we could never get rid of, and we couldn't figure out why. And when we finally figured it out, my doctor looked at me and she said, you are the healthiest sick person I know, and it's because of what you're eating. And that woke me up in such a way that I can now go and help people who are suffering at this big level and go, what if you just did a barley green shot once a day? Once a day, what if you just did that? Change nothing, just do that. And I had like 30 people join me in a barley green juice challenge for 30 days. And all of them were like, I have more energy and my skin looks better. And, and then there's the skin thing. My kids, people are talking about acne. I'm like, barley greens once a day. You're kidding. No, what? I can tell when my kids are not taking their barley greens. You're not doing your green juice. And, and that is speaking to someone's pain. And so I have learned to speak to their pain because they don't care about the antioxidants and the anti-inflammatory and it lowers C-reactive protein by 75%. And I can go on and on all day long. You've all heard me do that. They care that when they roll out of bed in the morning, they can sit up without pain. That's what they care about. They care that their teenager is no longer embarrassed because their face isn't broken out. And so when you speak to their pain and go, you know what, I have a really simple solution. They go, really? That's all I have to do? Yeah, that's it. That's all you gotta do. Or, you know, biomedic is the best thing ever because it's a really simple solution. They don't even have to eat it. Just add it to your diet. It will help you even if you don't change your diet at all. Just, just take this capsule is all I need you to do. Um, and you make it easy. And then my final uh, kind of note, I've been taking notes because I didn't want to repeat what other people were saying today. So I've been like trying to fill in gaps, um, teaching them, choose this, not that. That's why we started the Sad to Rad series that we've done here on Fierce Friday and teaching them how to add purine into things. Just throw some Garrett Juice Plus into your spaghetti sauce. It's a natural sweetener. It'll make it taste sweeter and your kids will get more vitamin A. Just do that, you know, or just barley greens is really easy to hide in chocolate. Make them a, make them a chocolate, you know, popsicle, throw like a teaspoon of barley greens in there. They'll never taste it. They won't know. Um, and, and so I hide things and I can tell you one of my biggest success, success stories in getting kids to eat that was going to, I was director of um, a music theater and uh, we had eight casts. I was only director of one of them, but we'd have this big party at the end and it was Christmas and I was gonna make green popcorn. And I put that appleberry pear shake on that fresh popcorn. And I popped it myself and I brought this huge bowl and there are Fritos and Cheetos and pizza and hot dogs and all of that stuff. 
I also added green spectrum to lemonade because it's Christmas. The lemonade was gone and the popcorn was gone. They had no idea they were eating spirulina. So if you teach people how to sneak it in there and they will, my final piece of advice is people will do for their kids what they will not do for themselves because we will put our kids first. It's how I figured out I had a dairy allergy. My baby was in early liver failure and I was breastfeeding. He was allergic to dairy and suddenly I didn't have IBS anymore, right? So they will do for their children. So if you get them in with their children, well, their children's pain points and go, wow, it's working so well for their kids. Have you tried it? Have you tried it? Um, and so I know we're, we're low on time here, Stephanie, I'm going to pass it back, but, but those are the things that have started working for me, being authentic, being real and recognizing that people will do for their kids what they won't do for themselves. Beautiful, Jody. Brilliant. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Jode. Okay. Coming back around to Ms. Carmela Velarde. Wrap us up here, Carm. I wish we had more time. Isn't this rich? I, I really, I was hoping that we'd hear from, from um, the field today as well, but um, yeah, Carm, take it away. Oh, wow. I didn't realize I was going to wrap up, but thank you so much. All these statistics, the way you guys have all shared your tips, like I've been following all of your journeys you know, and, um, and, and really, I know you walk your walk. So I really take it to heart and please everyone do take really, um, you know, let it, let it feed you, let it feed you to move you. Um, so all of you have shared some incredible statistics about, um, you know, really the 80 percenters, how to speak to them. And I guess my part, I think I would like to add that has not maybe been said was the part about it being our social currency to share. And I think that it's so important for us all to understand the power of one, the power of our voice and how we really need to own, take ownership. As you raise children, you know, that's sometimes the hardest lesson to teach your children is to take ownership of their actions. But this is where we as parents, as caregivers need to help them learn how. And this is where we are, teaching them how to combat the beast, the marketing beast that is our wellness, our nutrition system, that is marketing directly to the kids, that are marketing directly to the parents to make it easy for us to consume this commerce. But we are the movement of conscious commerce. We are have the ability to speak into our network, our social networks that are free, right? It costs nothing to be educators. It costs nothing for us to pour our hearts, our soul, our our truth. And this is through our storytelling. And just remember, and, and I remembered last night when I was prospecting one of my brand partners to be, um, he lives in a social, um, sorry, a food desert in Louisiana. And I was speaking to him about, you know, how I'd really love to open up this market because so many in that local area don't know. And so he, he, he completely agreed with me. And he said, if, if it happens well for me, I would love to share it. And that's the power of one, guys. The one, have that one influence that you have in a food desert be the model and really pour into that one person. And wow, amazing things can happen for your business. Amazing things can happen for you um, because you are mentoring one person to change a life and then impact everyone. Remember, the number one over the counter medicine that people are consuming right now is um, antacids, Prilosec. We have the number one solution through our alkaline plant-based whole food protocols. So think about the number one medicine that everybody's looking to. And just remember, I just told him, just take the power shake daily along with the core four. I mean, literally that one thing you don't need over encounters that's man-made and then you're eating. So if you can speak into how to um, really eat your medicine, that's what we want to teach people. Eat your medicine. Don't look for medicine and eat poorly. You're still going to pay. You're spending money. Like what Rita said, I loved you breaking to the access cost and time. Think about what they're dealing with and really just, yeah, the power, the power of one voice. I pass the mic. Woohoo! Eat your medicine. Oh my gosh. Are you all taking notes? Oh, I've seen people say throughout the whole hour, I can't wait to go live about this. I can't wait to share this. I can't wait to educate, making reels from this. 
this is the power that we have. This is what my whole team is doing right now is educating with social networks, making reels, taking these really important statistics and information about what we have and making it fun and sexy, <laughs> you know, like making it juicy, making it accessible and um, sharing our lifestyles. That's what we're doing. Rita, you're so good at that. Carmela, you're so good at that. Taz, you know, this is what we do, right? Like we share who we are, we share what we have and uh, we educate and we inspire and then people lean in, right? So, oh, thank you all so much. Rita, Council of Shodans, this was brilliant. Okay, eat your medicine, people. Carm, I love how you said that. Like that is so clear and such a beautiful directive. It's what we're here to share and it's what we're here to do. So we love, we love you all so much. We love the MMM. It's such an honor to show up here for you every week and to really, you know, lead with our hearts. So bless you all. We can't do this without you. You've heard me say that before. So next week, we have a very special guest, Allison Ellsbury, who is a, a, a Purian brand partner on the island of Maui, is going to be talking about body awareness and nutrition for children. You do not want to miss this. All right. So God bless us all. Go out there, shine your light, put on your green cape. We're the ones that we've been waiting for. All right. Aloha, everyone. We love you. Mwah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.